Hi everybody and welcome to the channel. Okay, I hope everyone's having a blessed day and that good things are coming your way and you feel good and you feel healthy and everything is great. Well, I really don't want to be the bearer of bad news. Why I started my channel and it looks like, you know, it's really not going anywhere <laughs> and that's okay. Uh, that's okay. You know, I may only make a few more videos. I don't know. You know, if I just reach one person, that's really my goal. I don't know how else to warn everybody that the world that we're living in is changing pretty rapidly. And, you know, a lot of people, including myself, you know, we don't always handle change so well especially when it hits us economically and we're already so divided our resources are being cut off and the squeeze is being put to us it does not bring out the best in people and with the shift that's happened in our society well that's going to put a strain on people's families and I think we're already really seeing that manifest. Well, I wanted to cover uh, the rising rate of carjackings amongst women. Because women out there, you know how I feel. I want y'all safe and I want y'all's heads on a swivel. And I just want you aware that, you know, this crime up in D.C. alone, in Washington, D.C., which has always been like notoriously violent, go figure. It says to date in 2021, the police said there had been 101 carjackings compared to just 22 at the same time the previous year, right before the one niner took off. And it says that number skyrocketed. Well, one of them apparently was arrested in 19 of those incidences. But, you know, Washington, D.C. has always been a really pretty violent place. However, I did find an article. And it it's called Crime Tracker. Okay, this is by Natasha Robin. And it says that out of uh, New Orleans, just filling up your tank could lead to trouble in a matter of seconds. A lot of people don't realize this could happen to you, says a recent victim. Carjackings are happening when you come to the pump. Most of us leave our keys in the car and they jump in and take off with it, says Peggy Bishop. Carjackings, car thefts, and burglaries are unfolding in the middle of the day sometimes at the pump, other times leaving a store or at your front door. See, that's the scary thing about it. Leaving a store is a really big one. That's a really big one. It says their timing was on point, says a victim. The victims of these crimes are often women. And this is a quote, I was in Waveland, Mississippi when I saw the footage and I went, holy God, that's my gas station around the block, says Karen Casanova. I had locked my vehicle when I was getting gas, says a victim. Just as this woman was paying at the pump, a Honda SUV quickly drove up. The victim says what appeared to be a teenager jumped out and tried to open her passenger side door but it was locked. The driver had a gun and they took off real quick, says the victim, but they didn't leave. Instead, they simply pulled around to the next pump where another woman was pumping gas. I held my hand on my horn and tried to alert the other female that somebody was trying to get into her vehicle, says the victim. That was really good thinking. The gunman took off empty handed. So far this year, women were victims of attempted auto theft 57% of the time. Maybe we don't generally have guns on us. I'll give you my purse. I will not fight with someone, says Peggy Bishop. 
It's scary. It's scary for my daughters, says Casanova. At the same gas station on Canal Street, days later, a woman, a woman walks to her vehicle to pump gas when a black car pulls in, backs up, and someone gets out. At first, it's unclear what's going on, but eventually, the front seat passenger of the black SUV hops into the woman's white car and takes off into it. A gas station worker says it happens quick, and oftentimes he has no idea until the victim runs in for help. It makes women want to start carrying a gun. I hate to say that, says Casanova. So far this year, more than 620 women have had their vehicles stolen. They've pulled up, pulled out guns. The guy hopped out and jumped into the front seat, says the victim. It was a terrifying experience for a victim, especially because her child was in the back seat. My daughter said, Mommy, he's got a gun, says the victim. The gunman, instead of carjacking the woman, grabbed her purse off the front seat and took off. They have to be watching, evaluating, going through neighborhoods, and targeting these easy targets, as they say, says the victim. Okay, that sounds like y'all's girl here, right? How many times? I'm telling you, and I'm not alone in this, that they are watching, they are evaluating, they are going through neighborhoods. Y'all, I see it all the time. I see them on bicycles with their heads down, and I know what they're doing. I see them wandering around on foot, acting like they don't know that I see them on foot. And targeting these easy targets. Y'all, women, we're just easy targets, y'all. I mean, we're just easy targets. I don't care how strong and tough and bad you may feel like you are. You get a guy with a gun, there's nothing. There's, there's nothing you're going to be able to do. You know, you just... The best thing that you can do when you go to fill up in my opinion, is have a weapon on you. Have a weapon on you. Get out of the way. Whatever they want, they can have it. Don't argue. Don't reason. Don't start a conversation. Nothing. I mean, and, and chances are uh, now with everything shutting down, with these pipelines closed down, this is going to set off a whole nother wave of crime. Just a whole nother wave. And uh, the, next top, the next topic I want to discuss is about these convenience stores in the first place. Okay, they're really dangerous. And the only, the only thing I can tell you right now is to have yourself some spare gas. You know, you can order off of Amazon. They have these really nice five-gallon, heavy-duty plastic, uh, spill-proof gas tanks, gas cans. They're plastic. You know, get you four of them, so you'll have 20 gallons worth of gas. So that way, at night or in the morning, if you haven't filled up, and you've got to go to work the next day, or you have to make a trip to the emergency room or something, you know, you have some gasoline and you need to buy some, go over to O'Reilly's Auto Parts and get some fuel stabilizer. Uh, those guys at O'Reilly's, I know I've talked about this in, in a previous video, they are so nice and so informative. If the fuel stabilizer is no big deal. It comes in a little plastic bottle and you just put about you know, a third, I can't remember, I'll have to go read the bottle. It's either a third or a fourth of it um, per five gallon uh, canister. And then if you don't use the gas within a, you know, uh, keep it for about a month. But if you don't, just use the gas. Don't let it sit there for months. But God forbid, you know, something goes down. I would say just get in the practice of using that, that gas. That's what I started doing. and. The more that they close everything down, it is just a recipe for civil unrest. And 
isn't that kind of what crime is to some degree? Crime really is a form of civil unrest, but anyway, back to this carjacking. Okay, when it comes to attempted armed carjackings, women are the victims 63% of the time. That's a lot for us girls, y'all. I mean, that, the scales are definitely not balanced when it comes to women and men. Women are victims 73% of the time for attempted unarmed carjackings. You know, most guys don't even really need a weapon to get us to, to carjack us, okay? I mean, mine had a switchblade, but the, my offender was scary enough. One of these days, I'll show you his picture. I mean, he, he looks like a Neanderthal, but yeah, he was pretty scary. Um, okay, so the guys jumped out of the, okay, so the guys jumped out a car that was passing and took her out of, out of the car. They ran over her with her own car, says a witness. Police say a 13-year-old snatched a 73-year-old woman's purse at North Dupree and Toulouse, carjacked her, and when the woman tried to stop him, he ran over her. She was complaining about her hip. She had bleeding from her forehead area, and both legs were chewed up, says the witness. Ah, uh, gosh. It's sad and it's scary, says Justin Brown. He's a former NOPD officer, but has been on both sides of the law. Now he offers criminal justice advice on Instagram through Empower You NOLA, N-O-L-A. That would be a good thing to look at. I don't have Instagram, but if you have Instagram, check out Empower You NOLA, capital N-O-L-A. Brown believes women are often victims because they're easily distracted. True. I know I am, and may be unaware of their surroundings. That, not so much for me anymore. That came from me being a victim. That came from me being victimized. Now I'm hyper vigilant about it. I'm never going to be able to shut that off. And I'm glad I do have to kind of, you know, temper it. But. My suggestion, and I this is to women right now, this is going to be a very unpopular thing for me to tell you to do, but at this stage in the game, I would not go anywhere. If you're a single woman, I would ditch the bars, I would ditch drinking, I would dr ditch Whatever it is that you're taking to medicate yourself. I'm not saying something that the doctor gave you. But I'm just saying in general, the party, the partying. Going out late at night. Being on the cell phone and texting all the time and checking your Facebook page. 24 hours a day while you're driving or while you're at the gas station. I see tons of people just locked into their phones everywhere they go. I've seen people cross the street with just women, just with their face in the phone. Walk, I don't know how they can even see where they're going. I see people driving like that. And that's what these people look for. You know, and then here's another one. I'm going to share this with y'all, and I know my video is going long, and you don't. I, if y'all don't want to listen to it, that's okay. I was walking my dogs down the street. We were getting some work done in our backyard, getting a new fence put up, and the guy working on the fence was taking forever. So I had to walk my dogs down the street to do their number because I didn't want to lose control of them. I didn't want them to run away. You know, I'm, I care about my animals. So I would walk them several times a day. And one day, this guy actually was a carload of men. Yes, they were in a white 
suburban type van SUV. The windows were down, so I knew they didn't have any air conditioning, and I was carrying. And they stopped and slowed down. And the driver said, Hey, lady, nice dog you got there. What kind of dog is that? And I knew, I knew this was one because I had taken that self defense class. I knew that that was a ploy, right? And I said, and I just said, Oh, thanks. That's a, he's a, you know, he's a certain type of dog. You know, I said, I gave the type of dog. And he, the car came, the vehicle came to a stop. I saw there were three men in the back seat, okay? And I seated my hand on my weapon because I knew something was about to go down. In the back seat, a man was hunched over in the car seat. In the car seat. He, was, he was crouched, hunched over like he was hiding. But I just happened to be tall enough to where I could see in that back seat. And I kept walking. And he kept saying, hey, lady. Hey, lady, wait. I, you know, I want to, what kind of, tell me about, you know, tell me about your dog. And I just walked very purposefully. And I ignored him. And I kept going. And my heart was beating 100 miles an hour. But I had my hand on what it needed to be on. And I don't know if that sent a vibe or not. But I continued back to my house, and when I got inside, yes, I, I was shaking. I was shaking because I know that someone was about, this was in the middle of the day, I know that someone was going to spring out and try to kidnap me. I have no doubt. I have no doubt. You know, ladies, you have to ask yourself, how many times has that happened to you that you're aware of? If you haven't been victimized, then you haven't, and this is just how I feel, and it was something that I've noticed and observed. If you have not been victimized, then you are still on the other side of the fence. You are still living in, an, you're living in another world. You're living in the world that nothing can happen, or you're, you, you just are living in another, you're living in a different region. Now, you may be skilled, you may be vigilant, and hopefully that you are, and you may be aware and have that knowledge really resonate within yourself so that you know, yes, this could potentially happen, and I'm aware, and I look around, and I'm very vigilant when I go to the store. Maybe you are already like that, and you've had some training, and you've been maybe in the military, or you've been in law enforcement, or you're just that kind of person. There are a lot of women that are very aware. There are. But there's an awful lot who aren't. So that's my white van story. So this article goes on to say, I'm going to probably have to make several videos out of this because I wanted to cover convenience stores. But, um, okay, as an older woman, it says here, let's see. Okay, this is a... Let me make sure. I'm going to make sure we get the whole story. Justin Brown is a former a New Orleans Police Department officer. Okay, we already know that he offers that on Instagram. He says, we have to change the way we think. We have to change the way we act, the way we move. We have to do it so we won't be victims. It says, Brown points out that the criminals are brazen. They'll strike anywhere, anytime. So something as easy as stopping to pump gas should be thought out. For me, being a former SWAT team officer, you have to plan this out like it's a SWAT roll. You have to get to your gas pump. You have to have your keys in hand. Lock your doors. And through all of this, you have to be aware of your surroundings, says Brown. See, he says you've got to plan it out like it's a SWAT roll. And that's what I've been saying is that you've got to you've got to plan things out like it is life or death. Everything and everywhere you go is life or death, and it's really true. He says, uh, "This woman says sometimes I feel uncomfortable, and I will go inside to pay." Says Vicky Langenstein. 
I have my keys in hand, so I mean, now they'll have to come up and grab the keys from me and take the car. They just, they can't just come up and jump in my car and take it away. Some women aren't taking any chances. As an older woman, I have to be very aware of my surroundings. So number one, I'm not on the cell phone because that's a distraction. For those who have already fallen victim, they say the crime changed them. I have a gun right now in my pocket with my hand on the handle. I'm terrified. I'm terrified, says the victim. Well, it's true. You do. You get terrified. But the only thing I'm going to add to that is if you are if you are skilled with your weapon, you won't be terrified. If you are really skilled with that firearm and you know how it works and you're comfortable with it, then you won't be terrified. You'll know what to do. So that just comes with practice and that comes with you know, with time, and but yes, it is terrifying. It is terrifying once you've been a victim. But you know, learning how to handle that firearm that that you know really helps help me to scale the wall. But I also know that it's you know it's it's a reality that this is going on, and it's just only going to get worse. I'm I'm sorry to say. I don't know if I have time to go into the convenience store or if I should just end this one and then go to the convenience store one since my videos are so long. Okay, well, let me go ahead and just remove this one, or I'm sorry, and end this one. And uh, I'm going to do another video about convenience stores because that's just a whole nother kind of topic. You know, the world has never been a safe place. Look back at Genesis. My gosh, y'all, it's been evil for a really long time. But we're just living in a weird time now where You know, when I was really young, we had a class, we we had to take citizenship classes. And that's not around anymore. There was home ec that's not around anymore. You know, the agenda to break up the family has been at work for a long time. And I think they finally, they pretty much finally gotten there. But, and then, you know, we can't pray anymore in school. So that's just a recipe for disaster. And we're just living in those times, guys. It's just, End times all the time. That's all I know the way to put it. It's just end times all the time, forever end times. We just have to learn to navigate through it. Well, okay, everyone. Thank you guys for watching the video. I appreciate it. And I hope it does help. And I look forward to seeing y'all next time. Okay, everyone. We'll have a blessed day. Bye-bye.